Hey internets, if you're a graphic designer who works on designing websites, your job may get confusing when it comes time to make your static mocks come to life. This is when you'll either need to learn how to code on your own or work with a web developer or web designer. If you do work with a web developer or a web designer, the handoff process may get confusing for everyone. After working on some side projects for my wife's boutique design agency, We've learned how to streamline this process to the point where we both hardly have any questions for each other. Okay, so I have my wife Jessica here, and she's a traditionally trained graphic designer, and I'm a self-taught web designer. Now, the reason why I wanted to get you on this channel is because it's so refreshing to see when you hand off assets to me when in, we work on a project together usually uh in past jobs when i get assets they're mm -hmm. just a google doc and a psd and i'm supposed to take everything out of that psd and measure everything with a marquee tool and, and it's just a lot of steps just to get to the point where i can start coding and mm -hmm. you figure all that stuff out for me to the point where i'm like Oh, I don't have to ask you for stuff. I just go and produce. So in short, I spoil you. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in my past jobs, it sucked. All right. So um, can you explain your organization process when you're getting ready to hand off assets for any web designer? You mean a developer? Or a developer. Uh, maybe yeah. we could back up. Okay. Rather before I answer that question, like the reason why I, oh, the reason why I do the things I do, especially when it comes to organizing files, is because I come from a print, like you mentioned, I come from a print design world, mm -hmm. and so I would have to prep files for prepress, and when it came mm -hmm. to prepping files for prepress, it was as if. I sh couldn't waste their time because their schedule was always packed with other things that I had to make their sh their process streamline. So I was yeah. almost packaging files for knowing in my mind that someone else was going to take my files and work on them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I then now now trans transitioning to web, that's how I handle my files still. I still have that same mindset. And naturally, I'm OCD anyways, so yeah. I like things organized. Um but sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> Well, I mean, your, your process, that's part, of, that's part of your process, and so... Um, oh, so, like, like you mentioned, like, when I, when, the way I do files? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and here's the thing, too, coming from print, is that I always had to deal with a lot of China vendors, and so I couldn't waste their time, too, because, of course, time is money, yeah. and they're overseas, so they're on a different time zone than us, Yeah. so we just had to make sure that they understood the files as easily as possible without asking questions. Yeah. And so and also the language barrier is very difficult. Yeah. So when we would prep files, I would include um, notations, hmm. um, specific instructions like what it needs to be. Um, you can't always assume that the person that's going to handle your files will immediately get it. Mm -hmm. They might say pick the wrong hex color mm -hmm. or the wrong font. So what I do is for like web designers and web developers, I tend to call out fonts, uh, colors, um, hex colors yeah. even, like not just the color swatches. I even like point out like exactly this is. So you give the hex code. Exactly. Yeah. Like very specific, like yeah. almost to the point like as if like obvious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do that. I make sure my layers are well organized. Um, but what I tend to do is give you a PDF with all the notations on it. Yeah. And then after I give you the notations, I sort all my files based on pages. Yeah. And that's the part that really, really makes me happy is like you separate all the images by uh, subfolders by page. And not only that, you, you have it where it's like nav bar, footer. Not just that. I also do. I make sure that the pages go in order as the same as the PDF I give you. so The sitemap. Correct. Yeah. So then it would be like 01 underscore home and then well, 02 Let's, underscore like about. Do you want to show? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, do you want to switch here so you can explain? 
No, it's okay. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, this is this is what we're talking about right These here. These are the, this is like the shared folder that I would give Nelson or my developer. So, this is for here. Let's go to, to it. Um yeah, it's a vodka company. So, to make this, it started as as this. Mhm. Mm right. So, go ahead ex uh, explain. If you scroll it down, I haven't seen this folder in a long long time. Also, yeah, I give you everything. Okay. So, you have PDF the PDF sitemap and yeah so sitemap right here mm -hmm. and these are old and it's like this is the first build so it's probably not the same so you see yeah, uh, yeah so you see I wouldn't give this to the client because the client would understand it so after the client approves the actual static mock then I go in and start adding notations so if you scroll up Nelson oh, okay. so you have your hex yes. colors here yes. um, <laughs> interesting I didn't add the fonts here well, yeah, you did right here. Oh, did I? Right oh, away, okay. Be Georgia old. And then I even yeah. noted like the background was going to be video. That's option one. Um, so then if you scroll down, that's another option too for the splash page. Do they call it splash pages still? Um, this is just a home page. <laughs> it's, it's whatever, dude. <laughs> But after, well, I, I guess this is age verification page. And then yeah. you go down here, this is the actual home page. Yeah. You know, and it still had Lipsum at the time. And t think about it this way. Yeah. When I would send chi files to China or prepress mm -hmm. here in the States, th this is how we would notate our um, mm. files. Yeah. D did the cost of printers go up whenever... Time? You yeah, because they had some more time because um, they're, like, confused about the files? No, it was more of just, like, efficiency and hitting hitting deadlines, I think, versus mm -hmm. cost at that... Well, from my experience, because mm -hmm. I was the internal designer. Okay. So it was more important of, like, if we're going to hit the deadline. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the same thing with web. You know, you want to hit the deadline and you don't want any questions. And But the thing, too, is I think you forgot to mention that we do do little kickoff meetings... Yeah. Before I go ahead and give you the assets, I sit down with you and I just basically talk through this PDF with you, right. just so that we have have you know clarification on anything or if you have any questions. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, if you look, if, I don't know if Nelson's gonna show you, but I actually do name the files based on row number because there's so many images on this design. Uh, if you go to a homepage, okay. So we have like about one. Mm -hmm. And there's just I just number it so that Nelson would be could easily identify which image was which. Yeah, and it, again, it makes it so much easier when things are named uh, in a certain way. Where okay, use I don't have to ask you. Hey, where is the image for this section? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh wait, that's an about section. So mm -hmm. I get it. You know, and like there's there's hardly any times where I'm like, okay, I'm confused. Where is this image? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and this is why I'm like most graph designers, f I feel they need to learn a little bit of web so they can package things easier for designers or for web designers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the thing you'll notice though too is that I only do the desktop version of the design. Mm -hmm. um, I leave it to my developers to f um, fill in the gaps and kind of figure out the flow of, it, of the site when it goes into mobile. And it's usually pretty spot on because the way I build it, I think I'm like, oh, we're using Flexbox. So that's going to stack when we get to like portrait, you know, yeah. mobile. Yeah. So then it's pretty much self-explanatory too. Yeah. So. yeah. It, it's up to us web designers to figure out how things are going to yeah. stack, you know. And um, I, I think that's where some questions happen. Yeah. Because it's like sometimes a, a site can look super long it scrolls forever yeah. so it's like okay which piece of content yeah. can i remove yeah. so it's not super long but i mean the whole process is so streamlined at least for me to to the point where i'm like i'm just creating a website i'm not trying to figure out how to make a website you yeah I mean? yeah yeah and it's kind of just go like that's the yeah. whole reason why i do this is because i want you to just do it yeah. and go and, you know, just get yeah. into your, like, get your headphones on and just build it. Yeah. 
Um, there is, but there is room for like designing, like when it comes to like interactions and transitions. Like, yeah, you and me talk through it, and we get really excited when you know you think of like, oh, we could do it this way. Yeah. So it's still collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's nice that you leave it to the a web designer to figure out those animations. Yeah. You know, and let them have their own creative freedom. Yeah, and that's what I want them to do because it's like I want they're the experts. Yeah. So if they have a an idea that will elevate the design or the the UX. I, I'm always all about it. Yeah. So um, ending. Um, so your process. Uh, can you quickly summarize your process and give one last tip to graphic designers? Summarize my process. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that's a very. Uh, mm, I just. To in short, summarize everything. Yeah. I'm I'm just trying to be very considerate of everyone's time, mm -hmm. and at the same time make everything streamlined so that the process moves faster. Okay. Because designing and the building process is just very, almost not time consuming, but it's just sometimes it could drag when really right. we just need the product and the website to be up. Yeah. Because. Like, as long as it's up, then we can go through it and test it, and then we could be like, okay, well, we could do it this way better, we could do it that way better. But, yeah, yeah I'm the, just trying to be very considerate of people's time. At least for the first build. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, name your folders with numbers, just like this. Oh, you don't necessarily have to, but I think it's it's always important to have folders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know there's, if you look over there, there's mm -hmm. like loose ones in the root folder, mm -hmm. but those are pretty much obvious ones. Yeah, I mean like the but, fave icon. <laughs> yeah. But organizing your your files into folders is, what, is a huge tip. And you always have to think about it this way. Um, you have to organize your files as if someone else is going to work on it. Because maybe one day you're going to be sick. You're not going to be able to go to work. And then they're going to have in like a freelancer come in or a contractor come in. Mm -hmm. And they need to figure out your stuff. Yeah. Really ASAP. Yeah. Without without question. Yeah. Yeah. So like you just have to think of, of, of the future. I know sometimes we all get stuck in like rushing and, and oh, we just got to get it done. We got to get it done. But you still have to keep everything pretty much clean. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you also think about too is that if you decide to leave your job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and you know the person that's gonna come in it's like oh dang now i have to figure out how this person's thinking because everyone organizes their stuff differently right yeah and i think that goes for coders too yeah. you know like oh. um if they leave their job uh if they don't have any notations yeah. in their code you know someone else has to come in and be like i don't understand how this person coded yeah thanks for the tips and no problem. Yeah. Hopefully you like this video. Um, yeah, if you. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I don't know. I I'm I think weird. So, to me it makes sense. But I don't know if like you're oh, just. Oh, it totally makes sense. Jessica, you're crazy. You're like wasting your time. You know, prepping files for a developer. So. No, no. <laughs> we need that. We need that. Uh, and, and it really helps streamline everything. Like I said. Um, but thank you so much. And yeah, if you have any comments about this video, uh, please leave it below. Uh, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always... Oh, wait, what do YouTubers say? Hit the bell? Oh, hit the bell? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is it notification bell? Oh, yeah, the notification hit bell. Hit the bell. Yeah, I'm, see, I'm still new to this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hit the bell and make the web beautiful. Bye. See ya. So the reason why I wanted to get you on the channel is because it's very refreshing to- Sorry. Why are you laughing? Because <laughs> the microphone is like right in front of me. Okay, so I have my wife here and she is a traditionally <laughs> trained graphic designer. Maybe we can back up. Hello. <laughs> okay.